So you're right now here in Wildemar, California and met Mr. Johnny Branch. Could you give us a little clues about the bike? So this is the shovel head I built right here in my little shop from scratch. It's a 69 motor. It's a, everything's made in house. I built the frame, the front end, the wheel, the wheel bag, the exhaust. I do a lot of exhaust work, so I do a lot of nice exhaust on bikes. But uh, the front end, uh, Made here in house? Or? Yeah, it's made in house. My buddy Rick Bray helped me figure out some of the geometry on it, but I pushed it, put it all together, made all the dropouts, all the. And the extension, how much? Uh, I think it's about six over the stock Harley. Only six over, okay. Yeah, but the, the, the but the dimensions of the frame is like, I think it's about 32 degrees of rake. 32 rake. About four inches. The frame also made by your hands? Yep, also made by my hands. It's all three quarter DOM tubing. It's a 188 thick, which is about 3 sixteenths. The, all the sheet metal parts are aluminum. There's no steel on the bike. No the, steel on the bike? No steel on the bike. Aluminum gas tank, aluminum oil bag, aluminum back fender. All built in house from scratch. Stainless steel pipes. But you claim this is your first this is my custom first, bike. It's my first build. As far are you as really I, honest now, Johnny? Absolutely honest. That's my <laughs> first build right there. My very first shovel head I ever built wasn't a show bike and it was just a rider and it was really bare bones and basic. So uh, if this was the first bike, how could you make a fantastic wheel like this? I've been fabricating for 15 years so the, the fabrication side of it's easy for me. The, okay. The figuring it all out because it's a bike side of it's not easy for me. So what size of material is this wheel? That's a high shoulder Akron hoop that I I welded up and sanded all the nipples down so this was a regular, regular nipple spoke wheel had 36 spokes on it and I, I welded the holes, sanded them down, Wow! built the hub on the lathe, built the spacers on the lathe, jigged it up, welded it all together. It's all three quarter, 120 wall, 60, 61 spokes and it's got 5 eight seal bearings in it with the 5 eight axle. And on the rear, the rear what is size a, do we have here? The rear is the American Racing 12 spoke magnesium wheel like off the gasser. So it's a, but the I heard that that crack. There have been some problems with yeah, that. Or this is an old school one, so this, these ones are good. The newer ones have had problems, but this has a, you know, the modified bearing blocks that bolt together. So it's, okay. it's, got, it's got its own its own bearing system. I did a Tokiko dual caliper rear setup on it. How? Why did you choose that? Just because uh, I wanted the you know I wanted to look like a hot rod and I wanted to look like it goes fast and stops fast, so I put big brakes on it. Yeah. But I don't like how it covers the wheel up, so that's why on the new bike I did a juice drum. And way, here on uh, the, the drive side, the drive side's got a it's got a pad head clutch basket and clutch that I machined, put a single 530 sprocket on it, so I did a single 530 primary tra train drive on it. Yeah. All the high control mids are all built in house with the you know cantilever shaft system with the hydraulic clutch, hydraulic brake system, and the master cylinders bolt underneath the train. So it's all hydraulic. All hydraulic. Both bikes are fully hydraulic. I don't have yeah. no, no mechanical. And I the mean, gas tank, the how much does it hold? The gas I tank. think the gas tank is about two gallons. Two gallons. Yeah. All the welding is all TIG welded, it's all weaved. You can see some of the welding there on the frame. Yeah. I left it all raw and exposed so you can see all the puddles and stuff instead of it being all blended out. But you can feel the bead on the inside of the fender. This is all three pieces right here. Three pieces? So you can feel the weld on the inside. If you put your finger in there, you can feel the weld on the inside is left raw. The gas tank's probably about six pieces. The sides and the top are separate, and the bottom and the tunnel separate. Are you self-taught or have you gone to uh, mechanic I've, well, I've school? Done, or? No, I've done, I've been in the fabrication company in the field for a long time doing off-road and boats and different stuff so the bike stuff is like new to me but I'm uh, self-taught for the most part. I've worked with a few talented guys in the past. Some yeah, old school guys but now that, you're totally independent. Yeah, now I'm totally in independent and I just do, I work for myself and stay, stay busy, that's all I do. All right, Johnny, your second bike is a real killer. How did you come up with the idea for this? Well, it's a, it's a John Harmon 120, so that's what I wanted to start my, my base of the bike around. Yeah, 120, but the, how did you find that? I bought it off Dave Polgren. He's, a, he's another fabricator, bike builder out of uh, Santa Ana, California. Okay. And uh, he had the motor, it was in a complete bike, didn't really want to sell it, and then I bugged him about it for a little while, and he finally like decided to sell it to me. 
And, and what condition was the engine in? It was in the just kind of a stock form. I mean, it, it was it was rammed down the track a few times in an old school drag bike, and it was just parked away for a long time. So I got lucky with it not being a wore out Harman motor. It was actually in pretty good shape. So get very few miles on it. Very few miles on it. And it's it's got the Carrillo rods and SNS cranks and the JE pistons, all the good stuff in it. Yeah. Uh, it came with a spare head and a couple of spare camshafts and some other parts for it. So. Roughly what year do you think it is? I'm, I'm guessing it's the early 80s. I don't know about the serial number, but it was uh -huh. a, it's a Grand Prix racing to, uh, who casted all these motors for him. And he passed away in 89, so I'm guessing the mid 80s, early 80s, something like that. Yeah. Okay, that was. And then you put Hillborn. Yeah, it's mechanical Hillborn injection with a draw through turbo setup. So it's got a T3, T3, T4 style turbo. And. Uh, Have you worked with this? Components before on cars or uh, um, Hill are you familiar with it? Yeah, I'm pretty familiar with them. They they helped my buddy Rick out, you know, quite a bit with his last bike that he built, and uh, um, you know, they, they 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 got it together. They they haven't figured out all the hard stuff done. You just got to kind of work with them and tell them what you're doing. So I had them set it up for uh, seven pounds of boost and uh, seven pounds. Yep. And I got the new upgraded. This is the billet fuel pump. The, the cutoff switch for the fuel. All the number 12 injector nozzles and all that stuff. So I had them, I had them set it up with all their, their new, their newer stuff that they've been building and producing lately. Because normally you'll see a casted Hillborn fuel pump. That's the billet fuel pump that they just came out with. So, so Hillborn, uh, then they knew that what you were on to, up to. Yeah. And did you did they help out? Uh, yeah. Don Enriquez over there. He, he's the guy who like knows all the all the combinations. So he's been yeah. Back and forth with me on the phone trying to figure it all out. So but could you actually ride on the street if you want, to, or is yeah, it uh, it'll, it'll too be, much race no, in I this? Think, I think it'll be kind of a streetable deal. Yeah, it's going to be idling and doing all that stuff, but uh, I don't know how street legal it's going to be for the, <laughs> at the end of the day. So and then uh, aluminum, most of the yeah, aluminum sheet metal, the oil bag, gas tank, rear tail section, all the intake piping. It's all aluminum. You know, I made all the intake setup. This is all my own stuff. It's got a stainless steel 2 under one header system on it. All the coatings on the motor and the frame are all ceramic coating, high heat. And then everything else is a polished nickel. And um, Where do you do that, your ceramic work? The ceramic stuff is just uh, it's, it's a, it's a coating that will hold up to the heat and the abuse. It dries real hard. It's the same stuff they do for exhaust when you coat exhaust systems. Yeah. And um, it, it's, uh, it was something I was able to get done in a, in a fairly quick amount of time. So that's why I use that. And it looks really good. The contrast between the gray and the bronze like that looks really nice. So everything was growing out of the Harman engine and then... I based it around the whole, the whole build is based around the motor. So I kind of built the frame off that. Yeah. And then I knew I wanted to run a back slick tire. Um, but you wanted a Springer on it. I wanted a, some type of a Springer, yeah. Yeah. That's just what I came up with in that one there. It's a fascinating details here. Can we see if there is some? Uh, if I take it off of here, yeah, I can show Wait. you. Let me set it down. Uh huh. So I can here. Just see it going up and down. Oh, yeah. So it'll do its job. It's not going to be. It's Please kinda, take the seat, Johnny. Let's see how it looks when you're actually sitting. It's kind of crude, but it'll, it'll do its job. So it's. Pretty pretty comfortable compared to that bike. That one's more yeah you know, stretched out type setup. On How there. tall are you? You are kind of tall. Forward, yeah. yeah. So, pretty comfortable. It, it looks like very could, aggressive. Yeah, it feels, like, it feels like I could go fast on it, not not be too worried, you know. Yeah, even if you haven't started it, it still looks fast. Yeah. I really like this angle. I don't want to see this in my mirror. Who is it that, that make that cover for the chain? Throwback cycle parts make the, the yeah, rocker throwback, yeah. They make the rocker boxes and the side the side cover there. Yeah. It's all in-house built primary. It's a panhead clutch basket. It's got it's got Martin sprockets that are machined out. It's got a BDL drive conversion on the front side with two sprockets bolted to it. 
It's got a BDL competitive competitor clutch system in it. And you do all this engine uh, transmission work yourself? All of it in house. I, in house. I don't source nothing, nothing out at all. No. All grade eight, twelve point hardware on everything. So what the people say to you in Las Vegas when they saw this bike? Oh, they they didn't know what to expect. They're they're not used to seeing like a more of like a race vintage race bike. You know, they want to see traditional yeah. type choppers and stuff, but. I wanted to mix them both up on this bike, chopper and race bike. So, but honestly, up. what was the biggest headache for you while building this? Um, I don't know. I guess maybe the intake setup because these heads aren't—they're they're not made to run an intake like this. So, you know, all these—these these are called wiggit. These are uh, hydroflow clamps. Yeah. So these clamps—they—they they, they come off when you when you I'll show you here how they come off. They're all quick release. So the whole system, the whole system is built off these clamps like this. And these are like, a, you know, there's probably eight hundred dollars with these clamps just for the intake system. And usually they are run by a race. Yeah, I mean they're 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 made to be quick release in a quick release application for like a race bike or a race yeah. car. A lot of turbo stuff. A lot of turbo guys will use these on their turbo systems. Yeah. But I mean they're still flexible. See how the pipe will still move. Yep. Even though it moves, it's still sealed up. It's got O-ring seals in there. So when these things are heating up and cooling down, there's a lot of movement going on. You don't want nothing fixed and rigid or else it ain't gonna, it ain't gonna hold up. Nope. And the rear, and um, for this, what you use? Drum brake or? Yeah, it's a Harley juice drum, a late model juice drum on there. I made the, uh, I made the, sp the hub on the lathe and then I built the wheel, figured out all the offsets, had the drum nickel plated, the Backing plate ceramic coated. Um, yeah, that's like a factory Harley piece. I have to learn that word ceramic. Ceramic, yeah. Okay. You'll be seeing a lot more of that now that I did this bike because a lot of people are going to be wondering what I did and how, how much it costs and how they can get their bike done like that. And you said the tubing on the wheels and the frame. It's a stream. Same it's origin. It's called streamline tubing, yeah. Streamline tubing. Streamline aircraft tubing. And some extra safety. Yeah, try it. security taking care of so nobody yep. steal this show winner okay Johnny I was impressed in Vegas but to see it out here in the light in Wildover I give you 10 points and I would love to be when you actually start it yeah and I'm gonna have a lot of video of it going on when I start this thing sure okay it will be on the Richter scale I think position okay good luck Johnny thank you thanks a lot